All right, we have a developing situation at the International Space Station. Uh, we want to let you know this is the feed coming in from NASA, their mission control. And joining us uh, is Bill Harwood to talk about this. Bill, basically, as I understand it, there's a spacewalk set to take place that uh, was underway, about a six and a half hour mission it was supposed to be. Complication essentially arose in the sense that one of the astronauts reported a film of water in his helmet. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. The spacewalk had been underway for about four hours when Tim Copra uh, reported water in his helmet. Now, this is a potentially a serious situation because if you remember back in July 2013, an Italian astronaut, Luca Parmitano, had a major leak in his helmet. He, in fact, almost drowned before he got back inside the space station. This is not nearly as serious as that. But in the wake of that incident, NASA put some flight rules in place that said anytime water gets in a helmet, you cut off the spacewalk and get back to the airlock. That's what they're doing. Copra doesn't have nearly that much water in his helmet, but they're not taking any chances with this. So, Bill, what was the objective of this spacewalk? What were they doing? Well, as it turns out, they accomplished the primary objective. Early on, they changed out an electrical component in the station's solar power system uh, that restored a lost power channel to normal operation. That was the primary goal. That went off without a hitch. They were in the process of accomplishing some secondary objectives uh, when Copra noticed this water in his helmet. So, you know, no great harm from the standpoint of losing the spacewalk or the rest of it, but it is going to raise questions about what they need to do to fix this issue going forward. They spent enormous time trying to get these spacesuits ready in the wake of that 2013 problem, had several spacewalks since then that all went well, but with the resumption of any kind of a leak in the helmet, that's going to cause a lot of head scratching and they're going to have to do some serious troubleshooting. Uh, Bill, I just want to have you explain for our viewers what we are seeing. The perspectives that we have been seeing from this NASA feed include just extraordinary images, essentially, from the helmet cams of the astronauts themselves, and so that you can see, essentially, what they are seeing uh, along the outside of the International Space Station. But can you just explain, for instance, what is this perspective that we are seeing here? Where right. is this with respect to the space station, which I don't think people realize it from end to end, the space station is enormously long. It's the length of a football field. Well, it certainly is across the solar array power trust. That last view was uh, Tim Copra inside uh, the space, uh, space station's airlock, floating inside the airlock. The view you're seeing now is from a helmet camera used by British astronaut Tim Peake as he makes his way back to the airlock. As you can see now, Tim Peake is looking into the airlock, and you can see Copra inside. So. Uh, they're very close to getting back inside. They'll close the hatch up. The astronauts will put their suits back on station power, and then they'll get them out of those suits. And like I said, that's when they're going to have to start looking into what happened here with Tim Coker's helmet and figure out what to do about it. I understand earlier the International Space Station flew over Hurricane Alex and captured some spectacular views. Were you able to see some of that, Bill? Oh, absolutely. You know, this is a first hurricane in the North Atlantic in January in something like 38 years. I think it's since been downgraded to a tropical storm, but the video from 250 miles up is very spectacular, very symmetrical, you know, that hurricane shape we're all familiar with is just particularly uh, fascinating when viewed from that altitude. Uh, and Bill, so we're seeing these images now of mission control. It is, is it safe to assume then the, the astronauts are back in that airlock, they are out of any kind of danger? You know, actually, I want to listen to NASA right now, if you don't mind, for sure. just a second. Yeah. The mission control commentator is updating us on what's going on. Other extenuating uh, tasks uh, to be uh, undertaken, no extenuating work to be done uh, to get the crew back inside safely. Uh, but the decision was made about uh, 20 minutes ago to terminate the spacewalk early uh, with uh, the major accomplishment having been completed, that being the uh, replacement of the failed sequential shunt unit on uh, the starboard truss of the International Space Station. At the time that the uh, spacewalk was uh, ordered to be terminated, okay, sounds good. We'll need black on. Copra had just finished the installation of a non-propulsive vent on the hull of the tranquility module, and Tim Peake uh, was midway through work uh, to string a length of cable down uh, the U.S. segment of the International Space Station for the future arrival of international docking adapters. That work uh, can be picked up at a later date on a future spacewalk with no impact to uh, other station operations. That's Rob Navius in Mission Control, again, recapping what's happened this morning in uh, the spacewalk. And this is Tim Coper. They're talking to him right now. Okay, 
Okay, great. We have Scott ready and uh, Sergey to help, and we got towels ready, and we are still pressing with a nominal repress. If you want well, to, grab he's reporting the a little buildup of water in his helmet, and that's something they certainly want to get him inside as soon as they can and figure out what's going on with this. Is ready for ingress. Continue to watch this image here. If you're just joining us, ahead, a Tim. developing situation here: uh, the spacewalk that had been set to continue here. Uh, Supposed to be about six and a half hours, is that right, Bill? Called off that's, that's right. mid mission because of a problem. This film of water in the helmet of American astronaut Tim Copra. And Tim, explain what is this that we're seeing? You're looking at a helmet camera view from Tim Peake, who's just outside the airlock. Those are his hands. Uh, holding the handrail. He's about to work his feet, his lower body, into the airlock. Uh, once he's in there, they'll shut the hatch uh, and begin repressurizing. So these helmet cams are very useful for flight controllers, for situational awareness, to keep up where the astronauts are, obviously, with where they are. And uh, as you can see here, that's the view out the airlock. That is Commander Scott Kelly. He's inside the other side of the hatch in the airlock, ready to help them out uh, once that airlock gets repressurized. And a little history being made here, because this is uh, the first British citizen astronaut, Tim Peake, uh, it's their first uh, spacewalk, right? That's correct. Tim Peake's the first uh, British citizen to fly aboard the space station and the first to ever make a spacewalk. And, of course, his suit apparently worked absolutely normally today. Uh, the problem occurred in the NASA astronaut suit, Tim Copras. And when's the next time they're going to be, um, do they have another scheduled spacewalk? What's the next uh, major event for the International well, the Space Russians, Station? Well, uh, the Russians have a spacewalk coming up in early February, but they use a different type of suit, and that won't be an issue for them. The next American spacewalk uh, had tentatively been planned for some time later this spring, uh, but this problem is something that's going to have to get resolved before they're going to allow that to happen. Uh, when they had a leak back in 2013 that was very dangerous, uh, they didn't perform any spacewalks for quite a while. Uh, while they dismantled the backpacks, all that gear inside those spacewalks, and tried to figure out what was going on, this, this could take some, what, take some time to resolve. And European Space Agency. We continue to watch here. Um, that was uh, uh, that Tim Peake's camera there. Um, we want to let people know earlier to, uh, today, as uh, Bill was mentioning, and as Meg was mentioning as well, the International uh, Space Station flew over Hurricane uh, Alex. Uh, it was a spectacular view from space. There you see it. Uh, the first January hurricane in the North Atlantic since 1938. Uh, just remarkable to see, Bill, the images that can be seen there. And I'm reminded of uh, another extraordinary fact that I think a lot of Americans might not realize when you see the image of, for instance, the inside of the other side of that airlock, right. you saw Commander Kelly up there. It has been how many days now, Bill, <laughs> that he has been up in space? He's quite a few. I'd have to go look at my spreadsheet to Almost give you the exact Almost 300 or so, right? Oh, yeah. He launched back on March the 27th, and he comes home U.S. time the night of March 1st, about the time the polls are closing on the West Coast of <laughs> the Super Tuesday primaries. Mm -hmm. They'll be coming home at a, during an exciting time. What exactly are they working on right here now? You're looking at the inside of the airlock. That is Tim Copra's helmet camera. Those are control panels in the airlock. Once they get back inside, they hook their suits back up to space station air, uh, cooling water, that sort of thing. And then they'll repressurize that compartment, open the inner hatch, pull them both inside, and they'll get those suits off. So uh, they're in the process of doing all of that. It, as you can see, I mean, none of this happens fast in mm -hmm. a spacewalk. It's a very deliberate process. There's a lot of steps that have to be taken in the right order uh, to make sure everything works right. But they're very practiced at this, very experienced, and hopefully in just a few minutes, they'll both be back inside. You know, Bill, as we're watching all of this, um, I can't help but think of the movie The Martian. And, you know, you, you know, the airlock system and people who might have seen that film would understand that these spacesuits really are remarkable pieces of technology. When you think about what it is that they do, they are the life-sustaining suits that allow these astronauts to go out in extreme environments. Bill, just remind us again of what kind of technology exists in these suits and what it is that they have to protect these astronauts again against right. you know when it comes to this extremely hostile extreme environment of space well as it turns out the spacesuits are very old technology if you will they were developed during the space shuttle program but as you say they have to protect the astronauts in an extremely harsh environment uh, the most obvious threat is they're working in a vacuum so they have a an air supply they have to cool and heat the astronauts when they're outside because when they're in direct sunlight temperatures are above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, when they go behind the Earth into shadow, it drops another 200 degrees below zero. So they have to protect against 
temperature swings, provide oxygen, they have to have drinking water in that suit, and of course they have to provide some protection from micrometeoroids. So it's a multi-layer suit. Uh, it's, it, as you say, a very complicated piece of older technology, and some could argue they need to develop some new spacesuits here in the near future, stop having these problems, I guess. Has there been a move to do that? I mean, you mentioned the other incident in 2013, which was far more serious, but which has determined the protocols that are in use today when there an, there's an issue like this. Well, you know, anything like that, as you mentioned earlier, spacesuits are really small spacecraft, and it's not trivial to go build a new one. Now, they have ongoing projects to design new technologies, but it's very expensive, it takes a lot of time to test them out. I'll just point out the view you're looking here through Tim Peake's helmet camera. Uh, what you're seeing there is the thermal cover on the hatch. It's basically a temperature thermal insulation that they fold down before they actually shut the real hatch on the station just to uh, help maintain the proper temperature. So there, that just Velcros in place and then they'll move the, the main hatch into place and lock it down. And you've been watching this uh, since shortly before eight o'clock this morning, Bill. When exactly uh, did the astronaut notice the water and how did um, he communicate that? It's about a half an hour ago and one of the things they did uh, in response to the 2013 incident, incident, the very serious incident with Luca Parmitano, they've instilled, uh, implemented regular calls to spacewalking astronauts to check their helmets just for that reason. Uh, they actually have a water absorbent pad at the back of the helmet that they put in just for this reason. They have a snorkel-like straw it extends down into the body of the suit and up near their mouth just in case there's a large leak that would allow them to breathe long enough to get back to the airlock. We're not in any kind of situation like that today, but to answer your question, as the spacewalk progresses, flight controllers periodically ask the astronauts, you know, how is that absorption pad? How, is there any water in the helmet? And up until that point, uh, Copra had not reported a problem, but then all of a sudden he saw a little bit of water and that was enough to, to, uh, for flight director Royce Renfrew to order a termination of the EVA. They don't take any chances with this in the wake of that 2013 incident. All right, there you see, it looks like the airlock being sealed, Bill. Uh, this certainly would, That's right. would be- That's uh, the airlock and he's now locking it down, turning that handle to, you know, dog it in place and then they'll begin repressurizing that airlock. All right. Uh, well, Bill, we really appreciate your insight and analysis as we watched that developing situation. It appears now that those astronauts are in the airlock, it would seem uh, they would be out of danger. Correct. I think uh, well, they, they should be out of there and get that helmet off of Tim Culper here in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. All right. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood, thank you so much. Sure thing. All right. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching CBSN Always On.